Alice Bennett in her absence, and Yolanda. Yeah. And Kayla, where's Kayla? Behind. Kayla's behind me. Yeah. And uh, also, Laura, who spoke today on behalf of the West, she's been our staff. Laurel, where, where's Laura? She's behind Laura Ashley. <laughs> There's a young Sarah who's not here with us, who was with the first person we press. And I want to give a special, as an, an amen. Let's give them a hand. You all may take your seat. <laughs> also, Miss Yara Allen. <laughs> Miss Charmaine Fletcher, who's yeah. been just. And Andrea Harris, who's been uh, the love of my life, except for not this team. But she is, this lady, when I came back to North Carolina, brought me into the Institute for Economic Development, and then Ms. Carolyn P. Coleman and others were part of me becoming the um, executive director for the North Carolina NAACP. But Ms. Andrea Harris, when it comes to economics, is a guru. And I love her dearly. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying publicly, Andrea. But I need you to join the Souls of Poor Folk audit team. I'm asking you publicly so you can't say no. I know you're in the comments. And I want to also remember Ms. Deborah Tyler Horton, who was our first volunteer uh, coordinator. Uh, Dear friends, I've decided deep consultation, and I want to thank Dr. Forbes for, I spent a, almost a semester in sabbatical in union with him and his tremendous insight. He's like a modern day Howard Thurman. Yes. And I, I've decided to accept the call, I believe it's from God and from thousands of friends and moral, religious leaders and fusion advocates to work with and to help them bring the essence of the Moral Monday movement we created in North Carolina as a part of a multi-state national campaign to address the related systems of poverty, racism, our extreme war economy, yeah. and national morality. Yeah. Yeah. The aim is to create a poor people's campaign and a national call for the moral revival. And together, we will help form this campaign and call in the shadow of Dr. King and others' vision, breathing new fire and energy into the torch of justice that was knocked from his hands by the forces of hatred, violence, racism, and arrogance. Memphis, April of 1968. Dr. Liz Theo Harris and myself visited the Memphis this year and helped to lead a march with Black Lives Matter and fight for 15 repairs of the breach. And we went to that room yeah. and her and I, on behalf of others, said to the, at that, on that balcony that we would pick up the torch and move forward. This is not a commemoration. We are not doing this for one year to quit. But this is a launching, a commencement, a building a long-term movement to begin shifting our national moral narrative. continue to spend much of my time on the road, along with persons of all races, creeds, and sexualities who battle poverty every day, along with my colleagues like Dr. James Forbes, Dr. Leo, Thiz, Theo, Theo Harris, Dr. Tracy Blackman, Sister Simone, Willie Baptiste, Rabbi Jacobs, and many others. Mary Kay, and bringing the good news of the Poor People's Campaign 
from the National Mall Revival to the National Electorate. I'll be traveling a lot like I've done in the past two years, not leading but working with folks. I also want to serve as a distinguished visiting professor of public theology at Union Theological Seminary. Right. Because it is critical that we train up a young group of clergy who understand that their role is not to be chaplains of Caesars, but prophets of Christ. The North Carolina State branches, which I've had the humbling privilege of serving for the past 12 years, has been growing, becoming more powerful in the state and in the nation. Black, white, brown, First Nation, Christian, Muslim, Jewish, many faith, and those who believe in a moral arc of the universe, young and old, gay and straight, yes, Republican and Democrat and unaffiliated, have joined our work over the past 12 years. In fact, after three calls, three of them blew up, <laughs> I've traveled to nearly every county in the state helped and, and helped and served hundreds of actions. When I first ran for state conference president on the platform of moving from banquets to battle, All right. okay. my family, my church, our deacons are here today from the church and ministers. Uh, I committed to this work with you, standing on a great legacy of history and history. In our first eight years together, we were able to build a people's coalition with strength and to push reluctant Democrats to raise the minimum wage, to win same-day registration, and early voting, to push back against the resegregation of schools in our, one of our largest districts, fight for more money for children and teachers and public education, we were able to free innocent black men from prison and help unionize plants and change criminal justice laws and push for health care, grow the membership, build new branches, and much more. We is the most important word in the justice vocabulary. <laughs> Not what I did, but what we did together. As a result of the work we were able to do together in that time, a foundation was laid that we did not know would be needed as critical as it was. It was laid for Moral Monday, which emerged in the spring of 2013. And through sustained moral fusion organizing with a race class critique rooted in our deepest constitutional and moral values, we pushed back against extremism, the kind of which we had not seen since the days of Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. well, for four long years, we pushed. Yeah. We pushed to see the defeat of an extremist Republican government. We pushed Push. and saw the election of more progressive members to the state Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. We yeah. pushed people not to be in despair, mm -hmm. but as Tupac would say, to keep your head up. Yeah. 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 We pushed. Push. And today, even, we get a victory where the Supreme Court has yes. spoken. Yes. We were right. Yeah, yeah. We said that our legislature was acting unconstitutionally, our governor was acting in a way that was race driven, and we overturned the monster voter suppression law that was, that was written with almost surgical precision. Yeah. And I believe, I believe that in a few days, I hope and pray, we will hear too that the courts will not hear the redistricting case. Yeah. And that will be As you know, extremism is at work in other states mm -hmm. and has gained power in all three branches of our federal government, much of, as it did here four years ago. This moment requires us to push into the national consciousness, yes. but not from the top down, from the bottom up. Yes. 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 
that the way to change the nation is to nationalize state movement. We must push into the national consciousness right. a deep moral analysis that is rooted in an agenda to combat systemic racism, poverty, warmongering, economic injustice, voter suppression, the denial of equal protection under the law, and attacks on the most vulnerable. Yeah. But we have to do it with a state up model. Yeah. And so I stepped down, as I stepped down, the North Carolina NAACP is strong. Yes. All right. Strong in agenda, strong in membership, strong financially. We have strong leadership. Four vice presidents, 16 district directors, and a host of members. I know that it is in good hands. But I want to be clear, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. My roots are deep in North Carolina. Yeah. My mom and daddy helped desegregate schools in North Carolina. Yeah. I've been in North Carolina, I went to North Carolina schools. Yeah. I pastored in North Carolina yeah. and I will continue serve as the senior pastor of Greenleaf Christian Church, Disciple of Christ. The NAACP, when we move, and Ms. Coleman and Dr. Spearman and Mr. McDougal will tell you, this ain't like a Republican and Democratic election. It's not like you throw one out and you throw the other away. No, I will still be an active member of the Goldsboro NAACP branch. I will still be an active member of the state conference and an active member of the National Board of Directors. We have already heard from the chair and the vice chair of the National Board of the NAACP endorsing this move and talk and saying how it will benefit the whole. I began as a member of the NAACP as a child, became the youth president at 15, and I will always serve the mission of the NAACP to eradicate it. and suggest succession any way we can, we will help to continue. And while I step away from my elected position as president of the North Carolina NAACP, I do not step away from my thousands of old and new friends yes. that we made over these 12 years, Vicki. <laughs> these 12 years of rebuilding this mighty organization and also building a fresh movement, and I shall continue to hold close to North Carolina, where my Native American family, my African American family, and my European ancestors have worked. But in this moment, I feel led to a calling, not a transition. It's not just my calling alone. Anybody living now can feel the spirit. If you know the spirit. In this moment, as many of you know, I was moved by the hypocritical and silly election <coughs> campaign that we just went through that rarely mentioned the word justice or love. Yeah. Rarely mentioned the word grace or truth. Yeah. The very words found most on Jesus' lips, the very words found most in the Bible yeah. that politicians put their hands on when they're sworn in the office. Right. Yeah. Very, very, very rarely, rarely, <coughs> if at all, mentioned. Tell it. Tell it. Yeah. I was moved, and in all of these presidential debates, over 30 of them, 30 of them, not one full debate on voting rights. Democrat or Republican. Not one full debate on child poverty. Right. Not one full debate on living wages. Not yeah. one full debate on racism, systemic racism. Yeah. Not one full debate on the impact of the war economy. Yeah. Right. Undermines our ability to have a real war on racism yeah. and economic yeah. impact. Yeah. Last year, when all over this country with Dr. Forbes, he as energy you will not believe. <laughs> he and I and, and, and Leo Liz and Sister Simone and others went all over this country 
for moral revival, trained thousands of moral activists. And in those revival tours, so over two dozen state capitals, there's a hunger out there. And I'm going to show you in a minute on, about in, 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 on film. We knew that regardless of who won, mm -hmm. we would need to launch a poor people's campaign right. yeah. and a national moral revival. Yes. We knew that before November, yeah. but we know it now, especially yeah. after November. I finally believe we must have a narrative shift rooted in God's vision yes. right. of love right. and justice for humanity as our nation is struggling. God's vision. God's like vision. Isaiah 10, woe unto those who legislate yes, evil yes. and rob the poor mm. and women of their right and make children and women their prey. God's mm. vision. Yes. I will say to the nation, when I was hungry, did you feed me? Yes. Yes. When I was naked, did you clothe me? When I was in prison, did you visit me? When I was sick, did you heal me? That's God's vision. Yes. Yes. This is bigger than Donald Trump. Yes. Because he and his election and policies, I believe, are a symptom yes. of a larger moral yes. deficit yes. and moral yes. malady. Yes. of racism and greed that affects our Congress, mm. our state legislatures, our public conversation, and yes, even our world. Mm. Yeah. We must have an honest and moral analysis That's right. to challenge the systems of poverty, racism, warmongering, economic injustice, voter suppression, and tax on the vulnerable. This is not about the false categories, and I say this to the media, Lovingly, this is not about left versus right. 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 Ain't no such thing. That's something somebody came up with. Right. There are certain things that are not left, right, but they are the center mm. of authentic moral values. Yeah. Like love, like justice, yeah. like mercy, like caring for the least of these, like treating the stranger right, like making sure everybody has health care. Those are the moral center. Not left or right. This is why in April, we announced the first steps toward what will be a 40-day campaign and launch in 2018 of direct action and moral challenge in a minimum of 25 states in Washington, D.C. Right. The first step to prove that this is not a <coughs> commemoration, but to deal with the fact that America is wrestling with a third reconstruction, yeah. repairers of the breach in the Cairo Center, uh, the Cairo Center led by Liz Theo Harris, we commissioned the dream of Dr. Forbes. Forbes told us every 50 years you ought to do an audit. Yes. What the prophet, 50 years after the prophet dies. And so the Reverend Dr. James Forbes, senior pastor emeritus of the historic Riverside Church, president of Healing of the Nations, Shelley Gupta Barnes, coordinator of the National Truth Commission on the Right Not to Be Poor for the Cairo Center and Union Theological Center, who's an economist and a lawyer, and Duke University professor Dr. Tim Tyson, are going to be the tri-chairs mm -hmm. of a distinguished team of poor people, economists, historians, political scientists, <laughs> community leaders, theologians, and other experts who will actually do what is going to be called the souls of poor folks. Mm -hmm. auditing America 50 years after the Poor People's Campaign challenged racism, militarism, poverty, and our national morality. Mm -hmm. This audit will audit where we are, where we were, what undermined our moving forward, mm -hmm. and what the agenda needs to be. And already, mm -hmm. these persons having agreed to serve on this task force, Dr. Amanda Alexander, assistant professor, postdoctoral fellow of African American Studies at the University of Michigan. Dr. Sherelle Barber, postdoctoral fellow at Drexel University. Dr. James H. Carr, Coleman A. Young, endowed chair, professor of urban affairs at Wayne State University. Dr. Ivor Carruthers, general secretary of the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference. Dr. Yeah, yeah. Lisa Kroon, professor of law and associate dean of academic affairs. Dr. William Sandy Darity, Arts and Science Professor of Public Policy at Sanford School at Duke University. Dr. Jarvis Hall, Associate Professor of Political Science at North Carolina Central. 
Margarita George, co-director of Healthcare for America Now, Dr. Stephanie Kelton, professor of economics, University of Missouri, Kansas City, Dr. Gene Nichol, board Tinsley distinguished professor of law at the University of North Carolina, Dr. Anaya Roy, director of the Institute on Equality and Democracy. But we also have chaplains on the harbor, Grace Harbor, by, uh, Washington, Michigan Welfare Rights Organization, people put people first out of Pennsylvania, United Workers of Baltimore, bridge the gulf uh, of, of the parishes in Louisiana, ACAR, Lowell's County, Alabama, Iraq Veterans Against the War, Southern Maine Worker Center, Fight for 15, Coalition of Immokalee Workers in Florida, Picture of the Homeless in New York, Equal Justice Initiative, and the Broader Network of Human Rights in El Paso, Texas, and many others are coming. Wow. Because you're right, Bob, we must have a gender-based, fact-based mm -hmm. activism, That's not right. just emotional right. activism. Right. Right. Mr. Attorney Ross Pellet is going to be leading as the executive director of the Paris of the Breach. The second step and final is with this audit, we will be, the audit will come out in December, but then we're also going to be traveling around the country tra tra training this, these ambulances. What do you call them, Liz? These ambulances, the ambulance drive, the, the coalition of moral activists, a minimum of a thousand in every state, including North Carolina, and about two thousand in this nation's capital, because we are going to have a laser-like focus on the poor people's campaign, and in and for the rest of 2017 and early 2018, we'll lead these trainings, moral leaders, millennials, and the mature, deep community people from poor, black, brown, white, and tribal communities, people of all different races, creeds, colors, sexualities. And why are we training them? To prepare people, along with folk like Sankofo, Gina Belafonte, and the artists, yeah. and yeah. in conversation, preparing them for a season of 40 days of nonviolent direct action in state capitals and in Washington, D.C. Oh, yes. I won't tell all of it because you don't ever lay out all of your strategies. <laughs> Why the states? Why? Let me show you on this film. Where is it? Eric, can you turn this off? You look right behind you. Oh, no, not that one. The map. The map. The map. The map. He got it up there too. He got it on the computer. Yeah, they got it. And then we'll take questions. You got them on the map? No, no, no. On the, on the, on the computer? Eric, do you have them? Yeah, I think that I'll take that icon up there. All right. We want the media to see you clear. I want you all to look at these maps because they show you how when you, when you analyze, you look at all the states that have voter suppression laws. You see them? And then if you go to the next map, and you see all the states that lack Medicaid expansion. Same state, almost. When you look at all the states that are without a living wage, most the same states. This is the intersectionality, the interlocking injustices. Look at the highest level of poverty, almost the same states, the ones that are darker and blue. This is why we're organizing in a minimum point. You look at the high states with highest child policy, almost the same states. And yet in many of these states, people continue to vote for people who are actually the antithesis of fixing the problems. You look, and you look at so-called Protestant evangelicalism. Now that's strange, yeah. the same states. Yeah. And when you overlay that with the states that have passed the worst immigration laws and the worst LGBT laws, you find out they're the same states. So if there are people cynical enough in the same state to hold people down, we ought to be courageous enough to come together to lift people up. That is right. That is right. And so it is humbling and necessary for us to serve with the poor, prophetic, moral, and faith leaders and activists across the country as we experience daily attacks civil rights gains for the poor and the vulnerable, while at the same time we watch billionaires get tax breaks to make, and make secret deals around the world to fatten their fortunes, to hide their greed, 
They bolster systemic racism. They undermine efforts to ensure living wages and health care. They criminalize the poor and the undocumented. They lie about voter fraud. They propose massive increases in the machines of war as opposed to the way of grace and the way of peace. And so we together must revive a poor people's campaign and a national call for moral, moral activism and revival. I ask you to stay engaged here in North Carolina. Yes, yes. This never was about one person. Yes. It's always about us together. Yes. And I'm not leaving the ranks. When there's a need to march and move in North Carolina, I'm still a homeboy. <laughs> That's why I want to say to all the media, you've been here today, but I hope you will not forget the name Dante Shaw. Yes. You will join us when we have a rally around health care. Health care is a human right and a moral demand, and we're having a rally. <laughs> Since the legislature, Carolyn, has decided to do different things on Monday, we're going to have Moral Monday on Tuesday. <laughs> Next week, North Carolina will be one of the states that we will build out the Poor People's Campaign. On number three, you want to stay engaged, Jonathan Hartgrove, who used to, by the way, be a, 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 an advisor to Strong Thurman. Lord have mercy. Don't tell it all. We're now working together. <laughs> Ain't God good? And on every first Sunday at 6 o'clock, we're going to have something called The Gathering. Time for reflection, revival, and resistance. It's going to be live stream podcast. First will be held right here in, in, in North Carolina on this first Sunday. Join us because we are about building up everybody who wants to be engaged in moral movement. And then last year, I want you to know this call is not some ego trip. But it comes out of hearing the voices of so many. Yes. That 22 state tour changed us, Dr. Forbes. It changed us physically, <laughs> but it changed us spiritually. Because we could see, not, we didn't, nobody told us this. We could see, nobody told us this, the cry out there for a moral revival. And I want you to see a quick video that just shows you the clips of the massive turnouts that were held in those more than 22 states around the country and why the time is now to move. And then I'll take questions from me. and mistreatment of the poor. The greatest sin in the Bible is the sin of idolatry, worshiping things, worshiping money, worshiping power. The second greatest sin that flows out of the sin of idolatry and exists wherever people worship themselves and say, I and I alone can fix things, is the injustices toward the least of these. So when Jesus quotes this Deuteronomy 15, he, he quotes this phrase not because he's condoning poverty then, like, but he's reminding us that God hates poverty. That God has commanded us to end poverty by forgiving debts, by raising wages, by outlawing slavery, by restructuring society around the needs of the poor. And that we will only have the poor with you always if we're disobedient to God. My friends, economic sustainability, living wages, is a moral issue. Education is a moral issue. Health care is a moral issue. The environment is a moral issue. Addressing the disparities in our criminal justice system that impact black, brown, and poor white people is a moral issue. Protecting and expanding voting rights and immigrant rights and LGBTQ rights and women's rights and Native Americans and labor issues. Those are moral issues. Sometimes God needs a thing created to move us from lip syncing to action. We're auditing so we can understand and 
we can set our plans in order for a reimagination and a re-engagement of a national moral poor people's poor children campaign in 2018, which will include all of the things that the first poor people can poor people campaign imagine, including putting the faces of poor people out front, including civil disobedience, including challenging systems of power because we must shift the narrative of this nation. The water we seek are our shared tears. The weeping needs to solidify us together so we know we are one body. We are one people. We are one nation and together we can be healed. We come together, red, yellow, black, and white. People have paid for sustainability, for humanity, for our children, for several generations to come. God respects the poor. God exalts the poor. God cares for the poor. God feeds the poor. God remembers the poor. God helps the poor. God is recruiting you. I want to know, are you willing to be a part of that association? interfaith, um, you know, um, coalition of moral actors who are not going anywhere and who I've had the privilege of serving with. I don't like to use the term leading. I come from a tradition that's, actually I come from a basin towel tradition. I'm scared of people that just want to have leadership, that are a leader or a title. I come from a tradition where if you're really a leader, you put on the towel, you get on your knees, and you wash people. No, no. And, you, and you inspire people by being willing to suffer. By willing, if, if it's a call, you, you, you're willing to be first in line to suffer, first in line to stand. And so I would say uh, that, that you heard the different victories, but they weren't just mine alone. I'm just glad to have been a part of. And when God gives you something, whether it's your education, whether it's your understanding of history, whether it's your training, whether it's some form of charisma, you know, which simply means grace <laughs> in the New Testament. If God gives your mind the ability to look at problems and see answers and not just problems, if God gives you the ability to look at a mountain of despair 
but figure out how to chisel it down into a stone of hope, then the Bible says, unto whom much is given, much is required. So I'm glad that I understood it was required to serve. And had enough, as my grandma would say, Holy Ghost sense <laughs> to answer that. <laughs> and all of the things around succession will 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 will, 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 um, will, will find its way. Because the goal is not trying to replace where you are. You know, the goal is trying to say what is it and who is it. And I've said this to the executive committee that God would have. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, I've said to them, you need to pray and fast and put aside any other agendas except that, which what would God have in this moment as we go forward? And you ain't not going to find anybody perfect. Because so you didn't have that in me. I know. I'm the first one. You're not going to have anybody that's going to fit all of your, um, your um, preconceived notions. In fact, you have to get outside of yourself. I had to do that to run. I didn't want to run for the end of the president. Uh -huh. I didn't sit around and say, one day I'd like to be president. <laughs> and then when I did run, Ms. Mary, I said, I'll serve two terms. And the Lord fooled me, <laughs> as the Lord normally does. <laughs> you know, he sets you up. So, so it's really about what is it? What is it? And then it's like we get a person, person how can we surround them? How can we lift them up? How can we all do this work together? You know, um, and uh, I, I've said to somebody, and don't look for somebody that won't aggravate you. Because <laughs> if you have a leader that, that will not, a servant leader that will not aggravate you, if you have a servant leader that's going to only manage the work, then you're going to have a, a titanic experience. <laughs> because the, because the, 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 the captain of the Titanic was a great manager. <laughs> Some folk told him to go this way. He wasn't a leader, because the leader ain't gonna always go where you tell him. You gotta say where you want a puppet or where you want to lead. And, 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 and they, said, they said, here are your uh, nautical directions. Go this way. And, it did, and he it saw the tip of the iceberg. But they said, go this way. We'd have just went this way. We'd have never built <laughs> Forward Together movie. We never yeah. built HK on that. We didn't have a model for it except way back in the past. Mm -hmm. So you don't want somebody that's just going to manage or somebody, I don't think, that's going to go this way. What you want is somebody that's open to the, the, uh, the voice of God and who has a heart for the people. Yes, yes. And a heart for those who hurt, not a heart for the position. That's right. That's not right. a heart for the position, but a heart for the people. And if we do that, uh, as Dr. Forbes often reminds us, God will surprise us. Right. No, you just want somebody that's available to be surprised by God. That's right. Amen. Thank you. Any others? Members of the media, I know you were led to here today, but we thank you for coming. It was important to share with the whole family today. And, uh, and I'm thankful to all of you for coming. Let us stand together. And uh, join hands together. And uh, you feel like let's, 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 let's sing a little bit together. Is that all right? Y'all that all right? Okay. And after we sing, and once she starts, you can take those hands loose and start clapping a little bit. <laughs> She needs to get out and she's out there fussing. Sing! Hold on.